The story of how you turn raw materials dug from the ground into probably the world's most useful material is as large as it is interesting. Steel is all around us and everywhere we go in our modern world. If something isn't made out of steel, then steel's been used to make it. Here at the Port Kembla Steelworks, we are operating the largest manufacturing site in Australia. The steel industry at Port Kembla owes its origins to the Hoskins family, who in 1928 relocated their business from Lithgow in New South Wales down to Port Kembla to take advantage of a deep water port, access to coal resources and the closeness to a big market in Sydney. Since then the plant has grown to a massive scale, 760 hectares in size. How is it that we can turn things that have been dug out of the ground into this useful material? Before we make steel, we have to make iron. And iron in nature lives in the form of iron ore. This is iron combined with oxygen. We need to split the iron and oxygen apart. To do that, we use carbon. Carbon in the form we call coke. Coke is made by heating coal in a series of ovens. They're a little bit like your toaster at home. We put the coal in the top, and after heating it for a certain period of time, we then eject it. We eject what becomes red hot coke into transfer cars. Water is dumped onto it immediately and that's why at the steelworks you'll see every five minutes or so a plume of water vapour go up into the sky. We have rows and rows of these ovens and when we line them all up together, just like lining up a whole pile of toasters, we call them a battery of ovens. When we process our raw materials, we can't use anything that's fine or powdery because it might clog up our furnaces. We have to make it into a hard rock that allows gases to pass through it. We make this hard rock called sinter in much the same way as another type of toaster, one that you might have seen in hotel restaurants. The raw material mix travels along a bed whilst heat is pulled through it baking it together before crushing it up to the correct size. All of these raw materials go into a massive structure called a blast furnace. Here at Port Kembla, our number five blast furnace is 26 storeys high. It is, in effect, a gigantic bottle under pressure. How can we split the iron and oxygen apart from within the iron ore? We can't do it manually. We can't rub these raw materials together and hope that it happens. We have to apply heat. Hot air is blasted into the base of the furnace. The heat generated creates a tremendous reaction. The carbon combines with the oxygen and goes off as a gas, leaving behind liquid iron. At various intervals, we'll drill holes into the base of the furnace and drain out what is now a liquid material. Liquid iron and also a byproduct material called slag which contains all of the elements we don't want in our mixture. Iron by itself is not very useful. You can cast it into various shapes, but if thin enough, chances are you could break it with your bare hands. We need a material that is tough, that's able to withstand being deformed and stretched and formed into different shapes, and that material is steel. In its simplest form, steel is iron, with just the right amount of carbon. We also add a number of other elements to get the final properties just right. And we do that in a way that we control it to very, very fine detail. It's a lot like if you were making something in the kitchen, say a cake, if you added just maybe one more grain of sugar too many, whoops, got it wrong. We use the basic oxygen steel making process to turn the iron into steel. To begin with, about 50 tonnes of scrap steel is charged into the vessel. You should never throw steel away into landfill. It's an important part of our process. We need it to make new steel. In fact, steel is the most recycled material in the world. It can be recycled an infinite number of times. Next comes around 250 tonnes of liquid iron, which has come straight from the blast furnace. When the liquid iron and scrap have been loaded in, we place a water-cooled lance down into the vessel and blow oxygen through this at very high speed. We don't light a fire inside the vessel. The reaction itself generates intense heat and the longer it goes, the hotter it gets. 
What's happening inside is that the oxygen is combining with the carbon, leaving behind just the right amount. One way to visualise what's inside is getting a milkshake, putting your straw in. Don't put the straw all the way into the liquid, but just start blowing. What happens? It all starts to froth up. At the end of the process, we have a large container of about 300 tonnes of liquid steel. We need to turn that into a solid shape so that we can process it further. We do that in continuous slab casting machines. The liquid is poured into water-cooled moulds in a way that we can have a continuous stream of metal in the machine. When it comes out of the end of the mould, it's a solid piece of steel all the way through. It's now in the form that we call a slab. At Port Kembla, we're a flat products steel manufacturer, so we make thin strip and plate material. This means we need to get our slabs and roll them down into a much thinner thickness. At our hot strip and plate mills, we use very powerful electric motors to essentially squash the steel. Plate material is used extensively for the construction of very large objects, like a ship. The hot strip mill rolls the steel even thinner. Slabs are reheated before being passed through a reversing roughing mill that rolls the steel to an intermediate thickness. It's then passed along and wrapped up as a red hot coil. We do that for a number of reasons, one of which is to make sure we control the temperature of the steel, which is critical at each stage of this process. After this, six stands of rolls at the finishing mill squash the steel a little thinner each time. As the strip gets thinner, it gets longer and faster. In a matter of minutes, one slab equals one coil of steel, wrapped up like a roll of toilet paper. If you unwrap one of these, it would probably reach out about a kilometre long. We're not finished with the steel yet though. We can roll the steel even thinner through a cold rolling process. We can then galvanise or coat the strip with a metal. We use either a zinc or aluminium zinc magnesium mixture. You may have heard of the brand name Zincaloom. These metal coatings sacrifice themselves to protect the steel underneath. We can then add a number of further protective layers in the form of paint, which makes it look pretty good as well. No doubt you'll be familiar with a range of products that we call Colourbond Steel. The people who work here at Port Kembla love living here. It's a tremendous lifestyle in a beautiful setting. We're proud of our environmental and safety performance in a community that we call home.